Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast and a big shout out from Maddie who left a review on Apple Podcasts and said, The podcast is a great resource for anyone looking to delve into the intersection of technology and business. Neil is a knowledgeable and engaging host, and each episode provides valuable insights and up-to-date information. So, Maddie, wherever you're listening in the world, I think it is in the US looking at the Apple Podcast review, a big thank you for taking the time to leave a rating and review. And remember... If you leave a rating and review, send me a screenshot to techblogwriteroutlook.com. I'll give you a shout out because each and every one of you are what makes this podcast what it is, especially when we're dealing with those cold, nasty algorithms that determine who will discover us and who won't. So, Maddie, a big thank you to you and on with today's show. And today I've invited Mark DiMassimo, founder and creative chief of a company called Digo, which is a creative agency that promotes better habits by building businesses using positive behavior change marketing. And I want to learn more about how technology can help change consumer habits and explore different ways, not just behavior change, but positive behavior change can make a real difference. We've got a lot to get through, so buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to New York, where Mark DiMassimo is waiting to speak with us now. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Mark. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure, Neil. So happy to be here. I love your show and it's 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 a cool moment to be on it. Um, I am Mark DiMassimo. I'm the founder of Digo, which is short for DiMassimo Goldstein. We abbreviate everything here because we are part of the fast moving tech driven future, like all of you. Digo is a positive behavior change agency. Uh, what that means is that we sort out brands and marketing and advertising uh, and we you know do it creatively. but we we tend to do it for clients when they're really trying to help people change their behaviors. Um, so you I mean you can imagine all the need for behavior change in the world today. Uh, don't blame us. Uh, we're trying, but uh, <laughs> mental, you know mental health, uh, you know, getting therapy, leading a happy day today, being more mindful, physical health, um, you know, weight loss and fitness and, you know, positive body image, uh, you know, food, eating better food, eating food that's better for you, being more sustainable, um, you know, connected fitness apps that, you know, help people stay organized and focused rather than distract and addict them in negative ways. That's our world, the world of positive behavior change. Uh, I'm a creative guy and an entrepreneur, uh, you know, from, from way back, really from the, basically from the 20th century and not the end of it, you know, sort of the, the end of the middle of it, I guess. Well, I love how you're using technology to create positive change in people's lives. But as you listen to the podcast, you know, before we dive into that, I'm going to ask you, how did you get here? What's your origin story? Can you, can you remember where your, your passion came from or, or what lit that, that spark within you? Well, yes, I, yes, I can remember. And I, I you know, I, I think to, to, for anybody who, who wants to, you know, move forward and maintain their passion you kind of have to know, you know, yeah. so I, I love this question. I love that you, that you, that you ask everybody this question. It's one of the things I listen for when I listen to, to your podcast, you know, in my case, I, my, both my, my father and his brother were, were engineers. Uh, my, you know, my uncle even worked on the team that, um, that developed the, uh, the integrated circuit. Um, he, he, he ended up actually, he's in Surrey now. He ended up moving to the UK before I was born, uh, and really, you know, opening up the market in Europe to, to, to Silicon chips. My father was an electrical engineer and, uh, he, you know, we had, um, we had his patents and 
the the uh, blueprints of circuits all around our house is art when I was growing up. Not to mention we lived in Edison, New Jersey, and that my grandparents lived on Edison land that was first uh, electrified, first had electric lights on it. So I grew up with, you know, sort of being oriented into this world about this coming digital future. And what the difference between digital and analog was, was one of the first things I learned, my toy box had uh, ComSat satellite stickers next to the uh, to the mad magazine stickers when I, I mean, I mean, when I was four and five and six. So I grew up being oriented into this world and hearing these amazing tech and innovation stories. Um, and I love to talk to people about the complexities of technology and what it means for the future and about adoption and how it can be distorting and all of that. I just love to be in those conversations, but it was clear that I was sort of the the big picture strategy communications person, and you know, rather than that person who wanted to follow, you know, do the work step by step to 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 actually you know create reliable technology. So, I mean, I, I guess I was born into it. So that path led you to Digo, which you introduced us to a few moments ago, which is a creative agency promoting better habits by building businesses using positive behavior change marketing. But I'm conscious there will be people hearing about you for the very first time. So can you just expand on that for people hearing uh, about Digo for the first time and just give them a bit of an overview? You know, so Digo to Massimo Goldstein, uh, digobrands.com, by the way, if anybody wants to check us out there. Uh, obviously on LinkedIn and Facebook and beyond. We're the, we're the world's first creative agency focused exclusively on promoting better habits by building brands and businesses using positive behavior change marketing. Um, so over the years, we've lent our expertise to life-changing brands. Uh, you know, some of, the, some of the current and recent are better help, the leader in therapy yep. uh, and accessibility to therapy here in uh, North America. Um, Shutterstock, which is, you know, tools to get more and more people engaged in creativity um, and connect uh, image makers and video makers with, with other creative people. Wondrium, which is sort of at that intersection of entertainment and education. Uh, so you can get a subscription and, you know, learn while you're, you're entertained by documentaries and professors and et cetera. Partnership to end addiction. Uh, you know, I've been involved for 25 years in the in the largest single issue campaign ever, and that's uh, that's you know with a goal to to help people uh, avoid addiction and 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 end their addictions. Uh, WW, formerly Weight Watchers and Weight Loss, SodaStream, Samsung, Echelon, Pfizer, so CVS Health. So um, we work with a, a lot of clients and have worked with a lot of clients in helping them change their behaviors. We're headquartered in New York City, but the truth is we're committed to work freedom. Uh, More than half of our employees are are not in the New York area, including, as I mentioned to you, I think before we started recording, a co-CEO who's in the UK uh, and uh, head of uh, client services who's in LA and folks really spread around the world. It's just wonderful what technology has enabled and we are we don't want to go back we do have an office a uh, physical office in New York City but it's so nice when you don't have to go there it's so nice when when we make sure that technology enabled uh, collaboration works so if i could take just a moment on yeah sure you know on why you know uh my my dad had all the qualities of that that one both loves and and has to tolerate in an engineer uh, he was he was uh, rational, orderly, OCD, and you know he solved every problem as if it would have to be replicated 300 times. So he would literally do calculations before moving a refrigerator, you know, over two inches. So I learned a lot about it, about engineers and what they're good for and all of that. But also being on the cutting edge of technology, he was a nonconformist about the adoption of technology. We didn't have a color television until 10 years after everybody else did, because he said they're still perfecting it and the price is coming down. If the phone rang while we were eating dinner, we were not allowed to get up and get it. He said, we invent these 
tools to serve us, not to become our masters. Wow. He was well um, ahead of his time, wasn't he? He really was. We had, uh, we had, um, we had seatbelts and we, we, and we had to wear them. Well, most cars did not have seatbelts in, in, in this country because he knew the stats. So he really got me thinking about how technology both distorts our behavior, how we let it become our masters and undermine our well-being, and also how it can serve us, but what it takes for us as individuals and as communities to remain the master of technology and get the most out of it. So I'm, I'm incredibly pro-technology, but I believe that, you know, that with change in technology, we have to take responsibility. And I believe there's whole markets growing up to help people do that because it's painful to become addicted, confused, believe in conspiracy theorists, be at each other's throats and all of the, the negatives that come out of, uh, out of uh, technology when it's not really well managed and mastered. It's so refreshing to hear you say that. And it's also great to hear other tech uh community, especially in Silicon Valley, moving away from moving fast and breaking things. And, and mm. we, we know where all this leads. But what, another reason I invited you on the podcast today was to talk about the rebranding and marketing choices of a certain Facebook. I mean, I'm curious, when you first heard about them rebranding to Meta, what was your immediate reaction as someone working in the heart of this space? Well, as we say here in the New York area, oi. Uh, that was my first reaction. You know, I, I think I, I had the same irrational, emotional reaction that a lot of people had that, um, you know, I mean, it, it's it's it, this is certainly debatable. And we, I'm sure that, that you could do many programs on this. Um, but, you know, I think we're I think we are already uh, living, uh, living in the metaverse. Yeah, I think we're where we are all look, look at. It look at you and me 3,000 miles away from each yeah, other, yeah. Um, having a conversation that on some levels is probably more focused and high fidelity than if we were in the same room. You know, we're, we, we're bionic, uh, if I can steal <laughs> from uh, the $6 million man. And, um, and so look, so I, to name the company after the wave of the present and future in the whole industry was was a very meta experience. It felt uh, hubristic, hubristic, you know, like uh, prideful and and like a bit of an overreach. And you know, I, I, it didn't it, it it didn't make me feel respect when I first heard it. Yeah, and one of the reasons I asked you that question is your big focus is on positive behavior change marketing. And when I look at like Facebook's ongoing efforts to rebrand to Meta, including things like calling users Meta makes, it makes you cringe saying that out loud, and changing newsfeed to just feed, do you think that's going to be enough to change consumer habits or are they too ingrained in their, their existing behaviors? You know, I, I think what uh, I think what what Meta is is I think what, but you know, if I if I just take a step back from that yeah. from that initial reaction and sort of ask what their strategy was, you know, we all remember when when uh, Google's holding company became Alphabet, yeah. and people didn't necessarily quite get it at first, but no one really cared because you know Google we we Google uh, does a job for us at least as consumers. We go there, we're searching. They provide results. They're good or bad results. Um, so whereas we go to them and they solve a problem for us with Facebook, Facebook tries to insinuate itself in, into our, our lives and then compete with our sleep, take up our time and by engaging us as much as possible. And, and I know they're doing some things to, to sort of leaven that now, or they're talking about doing some things, but, but it's a very different. So, so they've had a much bigger effect on our lives, even at, you know, even for, for the same dollar to dollar of business value. Um, so we do notice, and, you know, I, 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 I believe that, you know, big business conversations are really values conversations and often the values are, are unconscious. And, you know, I think when, you know, whereas Google started and they said, let's not be evil. Uh, and now let's, you know, make search as good as it can be. Uh, one can argue with whether they've stuck with that uh, as they've scaled and all, but that's where they started. You know, I really believe Facebook said, let's do something really cool 
that can make this the biggest thing in the world. Let's dominate social media first. And then secondly, yeah, you know, let's have some ethics and, and, uh, and, and try not to try not to be too, too bad a thing in the world. So I think the value of scale has trumped the value of, you know, what I think should be higher values. What role are you playing in the world? What role are you playing in people's lives? Are you changing behavior and lives for the better or for the worst? Um, and, and what are you doing about that? I, I think that that should be first, has to be first when it's not. So, so we do at our agency at Digo, we partner with an analytics um, and econometrics company called Market Theory. Um, and for the last year, we've been doing a, uh, a brand positivity index where that sort of assesses um, people's uh, perceptions of how companies are affecting their behavior in their lives. And if, when we look at tech, Facebook's results are near the bottom. Um, there's one other brand, IBM, that is curiously also pretty low. But Facebook, and what that means actually is that Facebook has to spend a lot more money for, for the same unit of market share. They have to advertise more, spend more, do more to gain a little market share than their competitors who are perceived to have a positive effect on people and their and their behaviors. So Facebook is Facebook suffers. Companies that are bad for our behavior on the whole or perceived to be, they suffer. They have to spend a lot more for growth and then a lot of other bad things happen. And I'm curious, how do you think positive behavior change marketing could fit into something like Zuckerberg's strategy and a rebrand like this? I'd be interested in your thoughts on that one. Well, thank you. You know, I were I Zuckerberg or the, or the folks around him, I would do positive behavior change audit. I would look at the impacts all through the journey and life cycle of, of people of the various constituencies that deal with. Facebook. And I would, I would look at their, what, what the behaviors are, what the follow-on behaviors are, how that affects their cognitions, what they believe and how that affects their, their, their mood, their mental health, their level of stress and their perception of how they're doing in the world. Um, I know they've done some pieces of this because you know, it's led to some policy changes there. Yeah. I think they need to do it comprehensively. And that I think they need to make being a force for positive behavior change a, uh, the number one priority of the company. Because when you are that, other good things follow. It becomes, you you have fewer regulation problems, right? You, you Maybe you get regulated, but you but it's, it's not, you don't get split up, for example. Because you're a positive force and people feel you are. Um, people are on the whole happy to connect uh, with you. If you're a, a social platform, that's incredibly important as well. And it actually costs less to, to grow when people feel you're a positive force. If, you know, in the in the you can only get so far. Um and be perceived as a as as a malevolent force in people's lives, whether that's intentional or not. I, I know it can work in the short run, but um, what happens is as as you grow, the forces array against you um, because people are very afraid of something that isn't a positive force in their lives becoming uber powerful. And so, uh, you know, Facebook is on is on the cusp of that now. I think they need to do that. Incredibly cool. And I'm going to ask you a pretty big question here. Apologies. I'm going to put you on the spot. If I were to ask you to look inside your virtual crystal ball, what would your prediction be for the future of Meta? So what, what I would say is that, um, I, you know, what, what the, the part of the reason behind Meta is I believe that Mark Zuckerberg and his team are, are seeing the 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 decline seeing declines in growth and massive headwinds for Facebook mm -hmm. and they and and they need a vision for accelerating growth into the future very hard for a company that's already big and has been so focused on growth 
But they, you know, they need, just as Apple needed its iPhone, and it's the strategy that led to its iPhone to unlock massive growth, even in what was already a large company, um, just as Microsoft, uh, you know, sort of languished for, you know, somewhere between one and two decades with sort of flat and sideways growth after their whole, you know, uh, you know, uh, PC operating system and office suite could only drive growth so much. Um, you know, Microsoft, we see after that sort of sideways move, we see growth and value and all of that under new leadership now, but it took quite a long time. So if I were to predict, I would say that, you know, there's a certain desperation to have a reason for very fast growth in the near term. If I had to predict, I would say they're not going to get it. I'm going to yeah. say that over the over the next uh, decade, they're, 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 the, the value of their overall stock, in my mind, uh, is it's, the growth is going to slow or it's going to be flat while they, while they really work out the challenge of their headwinds. They've got to, you know, they've got to get good regulation, but they've got to get, you know, the, the antitrust people uh, off their back or they have to go through that whole process. Um, I think they, you know, I think they want to do significant things, uh, you know, in the metaverse. I think they will do some significant things. Um, but you know what? Microsoft did significant things in gaming. And it, it, it just wasn't of a scale that kept their growth going like it had been growing before. It's the sort of gizmo that can become a Google or a Facebook or a Microsoft um, you know, operating system or office, that sort of massive gizmo only comes around every once in a while. There are a lot of other good gizmos that you know, can become good businesses, but just don't have the scale to drive growth. So I, I think they'll be flat for a while while they're working out what the next step is at best. Now, you mentioned a few of the trends there in, in your answer, but I'm curious, are there any particular tech trends or emerging tech trends that have caught your eye that excite you or you're just keeping a close watch on? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, um, you know, it's interesting, you know, I could, I'll start on the, on the, on just on the pure tech trends, but you know, where my interest is, is at the intersection of, of tech and applications to, you know, to, um, to improving human life through improving behavior. Right. So, so, you know, there are a lot of good, there's a lot of good technology out there, you know, in gaming, for example, uh, there and, and in blockchain and all that that encompasses, uh, you know, crypto assets, cryptocurrencies, uh, NFTs, um, different forms of, of, of governance and more efficient markets for collaboration and, uh, and, um, and 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 basically participating in the equity uh, of 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 projects that can be facilitated through the blockchain that I'm super excited about. I'm um, I'm invested in a small way in a in a uh, uh, a game starter called called uh, Vital uh, XP. You know, out um, out uh, in in the LA area uh, where a lot of these things are coming together to sort of help you know core gamers participate in in modding but but with with sort of high end like shooter games and other kinds of of games that attract core gamers so these i think there are these whole new collaboration economies that that are you know uh, being made possible by the intersection of these technologies but you know then on the on the other side of it there are so many things going on in games and also so many people in gamified worlds. And if I can use that, that word gamified, I still think is super useful old fashioned as it is um, because uh, you know, there's just so much stuff going over there that, that is still not leveraged for mental health, still not leveraged for positive community engagement, still not leveraged for positive HR, positive uh, employee engagement still not leveraged for solving a lot of a lot of problems that are still out there in the world. So I just like to be in the middle and and say, hey, you know, what works in your game could work over here and dealing with poverty over here or dealing with stress over there. 
Um, and, and, you know, the things that are negatively addictive can be positively addictive. And also maybe we can understand generations that are formed by these technologies and, and why they feel the way they feel and what's good about it. Because I do think that, that even though we have a mental health crisis here, that on some levels, the kids are all right. Mm -hmm. The kids who grew up on games and all of this are all right, maybe even better. Uh, you mentioned the kids are all right there. I wonder if that's going to be the song you leave us with in a little while, but uh, we'll get to that <laughs> a little bit later. But what, what is your big focus at Digo for the for this year and beyond, of course? Um, it's I mentioned uh, I mentioned uh, crypto and 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 blockchain. So a lot of a lot of my meetings are right right now. I do these salons and I do I do them with like high end psychology professors, you know, uh, Joshua Aronson, who's the head of the, uh, the, uh, my center for mindful education at NYU here is a frequent collaborator folks in positive psychology at, at uh, U of Penn. Um, but then also, you know, cutting edge crypto entrepreneurs like Gas Gaspar, uh, Drutzi was behind uh, Voyager and, minded and pager and and a bunch of other um really interesting uh companies and he also introduced me to vital xp so i do these salons with them and with marketers and and business folks and you know like one is on blockchain and loyalty you know how how companies can better serve uh folks over time just you know by by leveraging the blockchain and others on uh, blockchain and mental health, you know, how uh, um, we're doing a lot on dealing with the mental health uh, crisis. So, you know, yeah, how can, how, how do we, how can we bring uh, coaching and therapy and, um, you know, uh, the most uh, tested, uh, most effective therapy for anxiety and stress and depression in the world is uh, cognitive behavior therapy how can we bring some of those principles to the game spaces where kids are in a very transparent, helpful, uncreepy way? How can we just give them access to the help they want where they are? So mental health is huge. Just like it's, it's uh, the president said it's uh, the United States top two priorities, the opioid epidemic and mental health. Um, it's, it's my top two priorities at Digo as well, too. Well, I've loved chatting with you today. I feel like we could just chat for hours on this topic. But before I let you go, I always ask my guests, as you know, to leave everyone listening with a, a personal touch of inspiration by sharing maybe a book that has inspired them or or maybe a, a song or piece of music that inspires them or just uh, has accompanied them throughout their life. W what would you leave us with today? And is there a story to accompany your choice? I, I think, you know, future shock is real. Yeah. Um, and you know, you've got, you've got an audience of, of, uh, you know, I think mostly cheerful futurists, you know, uh, we, we, you know, we in tech and in the applications of tech get really excited about, about, about the future. I think a lot of people have future shock and so they focus more on the negative. So I would say, listen to a song, go back, find the kids are all right. Cause <laughs> in a lot of levels, the kids are all right. And the next generation, this is just the new language that they're, that they're learning. So that would be my inspiration. And if I would, were to suggest reading, and I would say Google online, I'm reading the textbook right now on cognitive behavioral therapy. Learn about that um, because it, it really shows that we, you can change your life by changing your thoughts. It's not just for people who have a diagnosis. It's actually for any of us who want to just get to the next level in our lives. So the, the CB, uh, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy is the name of the book I'm reading it now, but I think if you just watch the video on it, um, it would just introduce you to a tool for taking your life to the next level. Absolutely love that. So much gold in that answer as well. And I'm glad you mentioned the kids are all right in there That's for good measure. But before I let you go, for anyone listening, wanting to find out more information about Digo, the kind of work that you're doing, what you're setting out to achieve, how you help people and businesses and, and how to contact your team. What's the best starting point for everything? Digobrands.com, D-I-G-O brands.com. I'm Mark D. Massimo. Uh, you can Google Digo. You're going to find all of this stuff, but you find find me on LinkedIn, follow or connect with me. I, 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 I love, 
Hey, I love that simple technology. I love LinkedIn. I think it's a great place for serious business conversations among folks who want to change the world. Well, I always say at the end of every episode, technology works best when it brings people together. And what I love about what you guys are doing here is building businesses using technology to build positive behavior change marketing. Incredibly cool what you're doing. Love chatting with you. And uh, just thank you for taking the time to come on here, sharing your story, a great book and a song too. Thank you. Neil, it's great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Love what you're doing here. Wow, what a great guy. I could just chat with Mark for ages and loved hearing more about his story, his background and the work that he's doing at Digo. And also for discussing whether Zuckerberg's choice of rebranding efforts will actually result in the desired behaviour change that he's looking for. And I must admit, I've never heard of positive behaviour change marketing until today's episode, so I've come away learning something today. And I hope you did too. But as always, any questions, pictures to come on the show, any counter arguments or, or different vantage points on today's topic, I open my door up to you, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram at Neil C. Hughes, and my website is techblogwriter.co.uk. Let's keep this conversation going. We'll tackle another subject tomorrow morning, and I hope you'll join me again. So thank you for listening as always, and until next time. Don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.